Hey guys, this is EJ Holland with the Wolverine.com. Welcome to another episode of the Wolverine Recruiting Podcast. You can sign up for the Wolverine right now, $1 for one year. That gets you premium access to our recruiting information, team information, football, basketball, baseball, whatever you want, and the Fort Message Board where you can discuss Michigan athletics with other great Michigan fans. Today, we're going to be breaking down the five highest ranked official visitors Coming out of the weekend, where Michigan stands, my thoughts on them. We won't spend too much time on each one. We want to get through them and get you some compact information. So let's go ahead and start off with the highest ranked of the bunch, the nation's number one offensive tackle, Charles Jagusaw out of Rock Island, Illinois, which is actually not close to Chicago. It's way out close to Iowa, um, right on the border of Illinois and Iowa, but yeah, he's, he's kind of way out there. He's, he was a, a kid that was hidden for a while. Not a lot of people had eyes on him. And he's really exploded in terms of recruiting rankings, in terms of recruiting value. A lot of top schools in on him. Um, and he's now, again, the number one offensive tackle in the country, the number seven overall prospect in the country. So a legitimate, true star at the tackle position. So right now, I think this is a Notre Dame-Michigan battle. Again, Michigan hosted him for an official visit over the weekend. I thought he had really positive meetings with Sharon Moore, Michigan's co-offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. Uh, I thought the visit went as well as it could have gone. I mean, Michigan did everything to sell a need for tackle this cycle, winning the Joe Moore award and uh, it's academics. So Jaguar saw a very high um, academic kid and that's extremely important to him. And he told me the academic presentations definitely moved the needle. But I still feel like Notre Dame is the favorite in that recruitment. He actually left Ann Arbor and went straight to South Bend. Um, and I know that Notre Dame had the lead going into these two visits. And I think Notre Dame having the final say is going to make it tough for Michigan to win him over. Um, you know, meeting Jagusaw in person, I think he seems a little more like the Notre Dame kid personality wise. So I think that's another factor. Um yeah, right now, tackle recruiting is tough. It looks like Michigan's going to strike out on Caden Proctor, Caden Green, and now Jagusaw. So expect some more names to pop up on the tackle board. Michigan's going to keep fighting for Charles, but it is going to be a tough battle with rival Notre Dame. Um, staying on the offensive side of the ball, let's talk about John T. Cook. So he wasn't technically a weekend recruiter. He was uh, a weekend recruit. He was actually, uh, or he's actually still on campus while I'm recording this video right now. Um, top 100 wide receiver out of DeSoto, Texas, uh, in the Dallas area. DeSoto is a high school that I frequented quite often during my time on the Texas beat. I actually covered Jamon and German Green quite a bit as recruits at DeSoto. So Michigan's already had success at DeSoto High, again, pulling the Green Twins. They spent some time with John Tay on his official visit, which again is still ongoing. It's about to close out, but he's having a great time on campus. Early returns are that Michigan really surprised him, moved the needle. I think Michigan is kind of that dark horse in this recruitment from a personality standpoint. God, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. From a personality standpoint, he kind of reminds me of Xavier Worthy. In a good way in terms of everybody kind of expects him to stay out West, and I think he could surprise a lot of people and uh, end up at, ending up end up committing to Michigan. Obviously, Xavier Worthy had that whole entire ordeal where he eventually landed at Texas, Michigan, hoping for a different result with Cook. Um, they actually have similar games. I'm not sure if Cook is as fast straight line as Xavier Worthy, but they bring a similar skill set. They have a similar build. Um, so I, I would really liken Cook to Worthy on and off the field. I think this is going to be kind of a wild recruitment. I think Texas has the early lead. Texas A&M is obviously involved. Michigan remains the dark horse. Ole Miss is in it. Oregon is in it. So we'll see where the dominoes kind of fall. Again, I think Michigan is in the mix. Um, I think they made a true impression on his visit, and we'll see where things kind of stand uh, after his official concludes. Uh, let's go over to the defensive side of the ball and talk about the number one ranked athlete in the country, Jacoby Johnson out of Mustang, Oklahoma. Big fan of Jacoby Johnson. Uh, visited him in Oklahoma during the spring evaluation period. Love him as a kid. Always said that I thought he was a Michigan type of kid. He has that personality. He's 
really outgoing, colorful personality, also a high academic kid that's considering Stanford, um, multi-sport kid that plays track uh, or that runs track, also plays basketball, is a high-level recruit uh, as a basketball kid, not necessarily power five, but did get some G5 interest even toward the Michigan basketball facilities and wants to play both sports at the next level. So I think Michigan's uh, uh, in very much in the mix for Johnson. I think they're in strong contention for Johnson. I think Michigan could potentially land Johnson before the end of the cycle. Now, I'm not confident enough to put in a pick just yet, but I do think that this could have a similar result as Dax Hill. Michigan has experience going into Oklahoma and pulling top talent. It is being a, a guy from Texas. I know it is extremely difficult for out-of-region schools to pull kids out of the state of Oklahoma, but Michigan's done it in the past. Johnson's the type of kid that would leave. And like I said, he fits that Michigan personality. Uh, he loved his visit this weekend, both from a um, you know, football standpoint, a basketball standpoint, an academic standpoint. I think Michigan checked all the boxes. The coaching staff has done a tremendous job here. Jesse Minter, Steve Klingscale, Ron Bellamy, and of course, Jim Harbaugh all did a great job on the official visit. Um, on top of that, he's looking to return for an unofficial visit for the barbecue at the big house in July. If that happens, watch out. I know there's been predictions for Oklahoma. That was before the Michigan visit. I think Michigan solidified itself as a true top contender in the Joby, Jacoby Johnson uh, recruitment. I think that was probably the best interview I did out of the post-visit interviews with, was with Jacoby. I would highly advise you, if you're not a subscriber to the, to the Wolverine, to head over there right now for $1 one year and read the Jacoby Johnson Q&A. Uh, sticking on the defensive side of the ball, let's talk about top 100 defensive linemen. Jason Moore out of DeMatha in, uh, in the DMV. Uh, love Jason Moore, too, as a player. I think he is a guy that can play multiple roles. I think he projects well as a three-tech. He got some early looks as a pure edge rusher. I think he can play there uh, at times, but I think he's going to continue to add weight and be a dominant force as a three-tech. Another Notre Dame-Michigan type battle with Ohio State also thrown into the mix there. So he visited Notre Dame, he visited Michigan this weekend, and he now heads to Ohio State. I think these official visits are going to really determine his recruitment. I think Notre Dame has the lead or had the lead going into the official visits. I think Michigan made a great impression. I'm not sure if Michigan did enough to leapfrog Notre Dame, but I think Michigan is right up there um, along with Notre Dame and Ohio State. And I think Jason is just so quiet. And again, he plays things so close to the best and you haven't heard a lot coming out of this official visit weekend. It's not really a bad thing. It's just the way Jason Moore really approaches his recruiting process. So I think We'll know a lot more after all his visits conclude. Mike Elston, Michigan's defensive line coach, has been recruiting him since his time at Notre Dame. Has a great relationship there. Um, and I, I think Michigan is still very much in play for him. Um, and lastly, we'll talk about Raylan Wilson, top 100 linebacker out of Tallahassee. Lincoln, already committed to Michigan. Of course, Georgia, Florida, continuing to push, trying to keep them in the southeast. Coming out of the visit, I think Michigan hit a home run. I think... I'm more optimistic about Michigan keeping Raylan than I was before the visit. At the same time, um, it looks like he is going to continue to take visits Florida and Georgia, looking to host them for game day visits in the fall. But his connections to the Michigan staff, specifically to linebackers coach George Hilo, um, I think gives Michigan a, a really, really good chance to keep him. Like I said, the visit was a home run. They're trying to get him back on campus for the barbecue at the big house in July. I definitely think he'll be on campus for uh, at least one game in the fall. I do think there is definitely multiple worlds where Michigan keeps Raylan, but I don't think Michigan is completely out in the clear. I am still very wary of Georgia and Florida. I think this is one we're just going to worry about until, you know, he puts a uh, pen to paper and signs in December, but overall, I think Michigan helped its chances of keeping Raylan Wilson this weekend. All right, guys, appreciate you for listening. Uh, if you're listening on our podcast or watching, if you're watching on our YouTube, uh, as always, subscribe to the Wolverine.com right now, $1 for one year.